Hello. Welcome. In this video we will discuss some of the different planning strategies in S4 HANA. Benefits, which can be achieved by utilizing material requirement planning are. First. Enhance customer service by increased efficiency and visibility in orders. Second. Reduce inventory levels and costs through efficient decision making. Third. Save time through automation. Let's look at the keywords. Material Requirements Planning, MRP, is a production planning, scheduling, and inventory control system, used to manage manufacturing processes. An MRP system is intended to simultaneously meet three objectives. Ensure that raw materials are available for production, and products are available for delivery to customers. Maintain the lowest possible material and product levels in store. Planning of manufacturing activities, delivery schedules and purchasing activities. For keywords related to demand-driven material requirements planning, we have already gone through these in detail, in this video. Let's spend a little time on the concept. Material requirements planning, takes all incoming and outgoing positions of each specific material into account. Each MRP element, you can see them all listed to the left of the screen, are considered when planning the future receipts and issues. Given that the planning is time-phased, it also takes different lead times into account. Such lead times can be purchasing lead time, goods receipt lead time, lead time for quality inspection. In more complex production, these lead times are repeated many times, as there may be several bill of materials, where one component is the subcomponent of another. There are several levels of manufacturing to produce a finished good. Therefore, a demand of the finished good, will be copied through to the lowest level, at its full quantity, so our demand for 100 pieces will be copied all the way down to lowest levels of raw materials. There are several different planning strategies available in an MRP. The strategies connect demand and supply, with the goal to fulfill all customer requests on time and in full, while minimizing waste and keeping a stable manufacturing process. Proper use of the planning strategies enables both goals. A make-to-stock strategy means that the product is manufactured based on forecast, before any committed orders come in. It is used to match the inventory levels with anticipated consumer demand, represented by the forecast. The MTS strategy is mainly focused on operational efficiency. Make to order, also known as MTO, means that the product is manufactured after a committed order is received. The MTO strategy focuses on the customer requirements and fulfillment of the customer orders. Each material in the system has a defined way, how it is going to be planned. This is done through the MRP type. You can see that there are different options, catering for most scenarios. Classic MRP calculates the lead time and requirements of all bomb levels. The time it will take to produce something, will be the sum of the lead times. The idea of demand-driven MRP, is for planning to use actual demand as the only trigger for production. It uses strategically placed buffers. These buffers, and decoupling points, will minimize the variability in the process, as the buffers will be able to absorb the shocks, which most supply chains deal with daily. As can be seen in any demonstration, the two ways of working with MRP are complementary. This is an important point to note, the two methods work together. But when should you consider demand-driven MRP? The first factor is the forecast accuracy. The lower the forecast accuracy, the bigger the case for demand-driven MRP. The second factor is lead time. The more the lead time can be compressed through decoupling points in the manufacturing process, the bigger the case for using demand-driven MRP. The third factor is how many finished goods are using the component we are buffering. The more places your product goes, the more shocks the buffer position can suffer. You can see this is a postponement strategy, making only decisions when you have a qualified demand at hand. So while we move on in our video, and look at different ways of managing MRP, remember this. Conventional and demand-driven MRP are complementary, not exclusive. It is your specific situation, which dictates which method to use. In the demo section we will present four scenarios of production. There exist additional ways in which manufacturing and supply processes can be managed and planned in addition to these. The demos focus on either usage of forecast to drive production, as in the make-to-stock scenario, or how the requirements are pegged based on form of order. The choice of planning strategy should be made from the perspective of maximizing the interaction between sales and manufacturing, in order to have the appropriate customer service level, with as stable operations as possible, and the most appropriate costs. Each company can, and probably will have, different strategies for different lines of products. We will now look at system examples. We have chosen four scenarios to look at. It is make to stock, make to order, configure to order and engineer to order. We will do them one at a time. 
our first demonstration is make to stock, and how it will be represented in the system. To run the demonstration, we start with the app called Monitor Material Coverage. In the report we see the list of materials. We also see a graphical outlook on the right of the screen, showing the materials coverage over the next 21 calendar days. We select the material number, FG126, which is out make to stock material. To enter the detailed screen, on the detailed screen we see, the current stock level, the planned outbound movements, the forecasted values, the planned orders, and the production orders. The forecasted values can also be viewed graphically, in a timeline. The MRP run can be started directly from the stock overview. The MRP nets the requirements, based on the setup of the specific material. You can see that the production order is for MTS, and you also see that all stock is unrestricted and allowed for all sales orders. The planner can also convert planned orders to production orders, directly in the screen. Our second scenario is make to order. Again we will use the monitor material coverage app to show the full list of materials. Our MTO example is shown as an individual segment. As you can see in the stock requirements list, we need 41 pieces to fulfill this make to order requirements which can be seen graphically as well. From the requirements screen the planner, can again start the MRP run. The result of the MRP run is to create a planned order, to cover the customer requirement. This planned order can then be converted to a production order by the planner. Moving forward to our third scenario, which is configure to order. The monitor material coverage app is still the app that we use, in order to start checking at the MRP results. As this is a make-to-order process you see that all of customer orders are presented as single segments, in the overview. The detailed overview screen shows the customer order and the production order, which is linked to it. You can also view the exact configuration of each single sales order. The configuration, which you will see contained inside the sales order, can be copied through the logistics chain to a stock transport order, purchase order or production order, to ensure a seamless connection between the different areas. While converting the planned order into a production order, it should also be mentioned that it is possible to use configurable materials also in a make-to-stock scenario. The fourth and final use case in engineer to order. Similar to the previous use cases, we can view the stock situation for engineer to order in the same app as the other production strategies. This time you can see that the individual segment is a project WBS element and not a sales order. In the individual overview, you can run an MRP run in order to generate the supply element. As you see the planned order which is generated, carries the same account assignment against the project as the individual requirement. For a more in-depth view of how demand-driven MRP works, please see our additional videos on this topic. Let us complete this video by repeating the benefits of using MRP. First, the MRP system will enhance customer service, by increasing the number of deliveries in time and in full and by helping the company react to changes in demand faster. Second, utilizing an MRP system will lead to a higher level of control of inventory levels. Therefore, MRP systems can make cost-efficient optimizations with a high degree of accuracy. Third, an MRP system is highly automated and requires little to no human intervention in making the calculations. Thanks a lot for watching. Please comment, like and subscribe. More videos like this coming shortly. See you then.